everyone welcome to Chanakya. Winter is coming, but the heat is on. I guess you're right. We're going to talk politics today. Our guest today is an eminent motivational speaker. He's an author. He's the founder and CEO of a Leadership Foundation. Most importantly, an able a political analyst and strategist of our times. I take great pleasure in welcoming Mr. JVC Sriram. We are here to pick his brain on his political expertise. Thank you for joining us, sir. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much, madam. Thank you so much. So we want to hear from you about uh, the recent assembly elections uh, that will happen in two states, uh, which is Himachal Pradesh and Gujarat. Let me start with Himachal Pradesh. Um, they've announced the election dates. It's November 12th. Um, having said that, um, how is the situation in Himachal? Is it still bidirectional or is it um, is it uh, three directional? Uh, first and foremost, I don't think it is going to be uh, a tripolar contest. It is going to be a bipolar contest. I don't think AAP is making any kind of moves at Himachal Pradesh. In fact, mm -hmm. they lost their entire uh, Imachal Pradesh unit. So at this point in time, although they started off with a lot of fanfare saying that, you know, we are going to focus on Imachal Pradesh, I think they have not been able to get the traction which they thought they would be getting it, as a mm -hmm. result of which, at this point in time, it is purely uh, a bipolar race with Congress and, uh, uh, you know, BJP in the race. I don't see any big role of... Uh, you know, AAP being an vote cutter. There could be CPM in a couple of seats. If you notice pretty carefully, last time CPM did win the Shimla seat. So you could find those kind of parties in the race. But predominantly, it is a bipolar election with rebels playing a more important role, both from mm -hmm. Congress side and more importantly from BJP. Yeah, the reason for me asking that question was uh, the margin of victory was very narrow. Uh, uh, the margin of victory for BJP in the previous election um, uh, in almost uh, 30 to 34 seats was very narrow. It was uh, it was somewhere around thousand uh, thousand votes or so. That's that's mainly uh, that's basically my uh, reason for asking that question. The margin has always been close because Himachal Pradesh is a very small state. So if you look at it, the margin between the uh, BJP and Congress last year was almost seven percent. If I get my statistics right, it, the electorate is around 3 lakhs vote difference. But that's because, you know, the, the electorate itself is very, very, it's a very small state. And most of the constituencies, if you look at it, the margins have always been in, uh, in a range of, say, around, because, you know, what is it they got? The total number of voters last time was 37 lakhs 84,000, which means mm -hmm. BJP got around 18 lakhs 46,000. And mm -hmm. Congress got close to around 15 lakh 77,000. So when you have, uh, you know, uh, a state of that kind, obviously you will know that anything in double digit is considered to be very close. Anything in triple digit is considered to be pretty close. Anything in four digit is actually going to be a landslide. So mm -hmm. it is not like a Tamil Nadu or probably a Karnataka or Uttar Pradesh kind of election where mm -hmm. you will see a large electorate. Okay. okay. So as a result of which, I think, and if you look at it, most of the constituencies where the BJP won, BJP won even with 15,000 margin. If I look at a seat like Nachan, which is a reserved seat, they won by 15,000 margin. And I can see another seat by name Bal, which is also in a reserved constituency, almost 12,000 margin. So when you say 15,000 or 12,000 uh, or anything about 10,000 is as good as probably a 40 or a 50,000 in any other state, it would be called as a landslide. So that is how the state is set up. So um, I, I just want to understand who is the face of Congress. Like mm. Priyanka, Malikarjun Karke has taken up as the uh, we know that Malikarjun Karke has taken up as the president of uh, Indian National Congress, and this will be his first election. Um, having said that, Priyanka Odra is trying to uh, project herself as the face of Congress in Himachal. Um, I also have this question: Who is actually the face of Congress? In Himachal. Himachal Pradesh, it is faceless. 
Okay. okay. <laughs> you were you were talking about Malikarjun Kagre Kagre. It was not a sarcastic smile. It was a natural smile which came out for me. He is just warming the chair. I for, didn't mean to be sarcastic uh, as well. <laughs> no, no. I'm 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 giving a disclaimer for the sake of viewers. Okay. Okay. Because he has just taken over yesterday. Uh, we are doing this interview on Thursday morning. He took over on Wednesday morning. So I don't mean to say anything else, but I think you know. He is a uh, non-entity as far as uh, Imachal Pradesh is concerned, and later on when we are going to speak, and Gujarat also is going to be a non-entity. Mm-hmm. I think if you notice very carefully, the whole Bharat Jodo Yatra. I don't know. You have not asked me that question, but you could have asked. You know, probably you had in mind. The whole Bharat Jodo Yatra could have been reversed. Why was it from Kanyakumari to Kashmir? It could have been from Kashmir to Kanyakumari, right? now because you know one more important thing is by the time it reaches kashmir it is going to be snowing in kashmir very badly january is what they are talking about on the contrary by september it's going to be a nice climate for them they could have probably walk through himachal pradesh and by the time they reach karnataka it could have been january or february where it makes sense to uh, go for a yatra when elections are just 3 months away or 4 months away But why did they plan? Yeah, why did they plan? They knew pretty well that they're losing Himachal Pradesh badly. Yeah, I'm sure the only person who can answer is uh, someone who planned it for Rahul Gandhi. But uh, I, I, I have uh, nobody, a... nobody, nobody can plan for Rahul Gandhi, Miss Mala. Nobody can plan for Rahul Gandhi. Rahul mm-hmm. Gandhi plans by himself. Okay, okay. because mm-hmm. if somebody is going to plan for him, then that person would have been sacked long time back. It is just because that he doesn't listen to anybody. Anybody he plans for himself. He writes the destiny for himself, and mm-hmm. that is the greatest. That is the greatest joke of the century. Is that okay. he writes his own destiny. So as a result of which nobody can plan. So mm-hmm. he could have easily done it. And uh, Priyanka Vadra, after the after the kind of uh, colossal failure in uh, Uttar Pradesh, I don't know. You know that's what exactly I was uh, I was trying to ask as well because you know after going through uh, what happened in Uttar Pradesh, uh, she is still trying to project and uh, no one else else has uh, you know uh, spoken about it and uh, you know that was that was pretty uh, surprising for me. So keeping that aside, uh, so you said that there is no sense of Congress. um uh, i just want to understand um how was the uh, how was the anti incumbency against the um uh, first time chief minister jairam thakur see, see he's a very he's a very uh, he's not a charismatic person mm-hmm. uh, actually uh, if you look at himachal pradesh the only charismatic leader i would not even call anybody else in this last 20 years has been bibir badra singh okay mm-hmm. shanta kumar had that kind of persona uh but i don't think even pk dumal had that kind of persona neither does jairam thakur have that probably in future you might see anurag thakur having the kind of persona going mm-hmm. forward okay mm-hmm. the young leader who has already occupied a kind of a center stage as far as himachal popular politics is concerned but it's it's pretty early days for him he has a long yes. way to go so as a result of which jairam thakur is not extremely popular at the same time he is not unpopular mm-hmm. okay uh in fact unlike uttarakhand where they changed uh three cms and finally they settled with uh, the new cm who's occupying the seat there pushkar uh, dami uh, himachal pradesh did not have that kind of problem in the okay. sense say delivery wise it has not been a major issue so as a result of which jairam thakur and jairam thakur from time to time has been giving his report card on his own proactively has been giving report card to the public to the prime mm-hmm. minister to jp nadda so as a result of which I think he has done a decent job. He's not done an amazing job. He's not your he's not your yogi kind of person, uh, but he's your calm going, probably a promote servant kind of chief minister who has gone about his job doing. And he knew pretty well that he knows pretty well. You know, I shouldn't say he knew. He knows pretty well that uh, he has that uh, greatest advantage of uh, Modi ji's uh, name and face mm-hmm. because it is that which is going to carry at the end of the day. Himachal mm-hmm. loves Modi. In fact, I should say that both the hill states of Himachal and the Uttarakhand, uh, mm-hmm. they go much beyond. Okay, uh, if 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 in an assembly election uh, they vote forty eight percent, you can see that it goes to sixty eight percent or sixty nine percent when it comes to a question of parliamentary polls. Because mm-hmm. Modi on his own can carry twenty percentage point up, which is not been seen. 
by anybody else, including Indira Gandhi, was never able to pull that kind of amazing victories. And that's the level of, you know, charm and charisma which uh, uh, Modi ji carries. Mm -hmm. And I should tell you, as far as Imachal is concerned, I have a very close person whom I've worked with. She works with an agriculture company. Mm -hmm. uh, as a result of which, she interacts with a lot of farmers and, you know, the influencing farmers and various people. I spoke to her sometime in April or May. She said, Shriram, I think, you know, it's going to be back to Congress because the Imachal has got the tradition of voting back and forth. So, Saturday... Exactly. Uh, that was again one of my questions because uh, having, um, if we take a look at the voting pattern in Himachal, uh, Himachal Pradesh has always been a yeah, swing state. Yeah. So, if, if uh, so, it is a swing state, in fact, that's the reason why I reached out to many people. I'm mentioning this particular person basically because she interacts with a lot of farming community. Mm -hmm. Okay. Farming community, when I say farming community, it's not just farmers, you know, distributors, the local influencers, the officers. So, uh, she was telling me sometime in the April, May that uh, no, Sri Ram, I think, you know, uh, it, it will go back to Congress predominantly because I think it is a swing state, it, as you rightly said. Mm -hmm. But then I spoke to her on Saturday. In fact, I'm, I'm supposed to call her in the day or two. Uh, mm -hmm. I've not yet spoken to her personally because she's right now in the marshal. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I spoke to her on Saturday and she said, uh, it looks like BJP is coming back. And that's what is the hava which is going around in the ground. So, <clears throat> this is I'm talking about from the ground. Mm -hmm. From the ground, the report, which obviously, you know, it's not going to be a kind of victory last time. I think they won 47, if I'm right. It mm -hmm. may not be that kind of a victory. It might be sometime closer to 40 plus or minus 38, 42. That's the range which we are talking about. But it's not going to be an outlandish performance. Uh, see, if you look at the swing states, uh, Uttarakhand must have swung. Yeah. Goa must have swung. In fact, Goa, even personally, I didn't believe 20. I believe 1780. In mm. fact, I still remember uh, in Tandi TV, there is a lady called Ashogarshini. Okay, during the show, I told her that whatever is the mandate, 4 p.m., suitcases will start changing. And irrespective of suitcases, Go Goa will be uh, done and dusted. So actually, she scheduled a show with me by 4.30. Okay, <laughs> and 4.30 I log in. and she's not there. And I call her, what, madam, you cancelled it. We are supposed to go like, sir, what, sir, you told 4 o'clock, 3 o'clock and all, nothing has happened by now. They've already won. What is there to talk about it? I've abandoned the show. So, that's what it is. So, I'm not joking. This is the truth. I'm naming the anchor also. I'm naming the TV channel also. Because I went on record on the channel and said, irrespective of what happens, 3 o'clock later, only the show starts in Goa, which is what is the belief of many people. Not mm -hmm. only me, I think many authors also, political commentators also wrote the same thing. But you like it or dislike it, the mandate was given by people because people know pretty well, you know, irrespective of whatever happens, BJP will form the government. Might as well pretty well give the mandate to BJP. So you're telling the Modi magic is going to work in Himachal too? See, yeah. it's not only Modi magic. If if mm -hmm. only Virbhadra Singh was there, Vidarbha Singh, you know, is there. The six months, chief minister. Yeah, of yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So, it would have been a very close fight because I think there are units in India, Congress units in India, where the central party do not decide. Mm. Please mark my words. There are, there are state units. I will name those units. Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Chhattisgarh, Rajasthan. These four units, earlier Maharashtra used to also used to be like that, but because there is a lot of dissension there, it is no more in that list. Mm -hmm. Karnataka, Madhya Pradesh, Rajasthan, Chhattisgarh, Uttarakhand, not Uttarakhand, Himachal Pradesh, these were states which were dominant. Even Punjabi earlier, when Amrinder Singh was there, mm -hmm. decisions were not taken by the central leadership. It is a regional party. They, they conduct their party like a regional party. Mm -hmm. Even today, that is why you know Karnataka is a tough state for BJP, predominantly because Siddharamaya and DK Shivkumar, they run the party. Okay, they don't look to, they fund the party. They fund the central leadership itself. So central leadership will have to just only show only. Once they come to Karnataka, keep mum. What DK Shukumar or Siddharamaya tells only they have to talk. What Kamal Nath tells only they have to talk. What Ashok Gale tells only they have to talk. What Bagel tells only they have to talk. Now that is... Probably, can I ask, uh, has that been one of the reasons for the downfall of Congress? No. No? 
actually speaking they empowered wherever they empowered the local leadership the local leadership had delivered when a ys rajashekar reddy was empowered he delivered when an ak antony was empowered in kerala and he ran like an autonomous unit he delivered when a probably a kamal nath was empowered he delivered kamal nath was empowered so much so that sindhya did not have a role to play that is why sindhya walked out of the party now considering right if if so much of autonomy was given to the regional parties what would how would how would the uh, central uh, leadership uh, manage to handle situations like what is happening in karnataka now we all know what's happening between sidaramaiah and uh, dk shivkumar really, i think uh, such, uh, i think mala one minute one minute let mm-hmm. me just tell you all this mm-hmm. talk which i also talk about in terms of this between <laughs> sidaramaiah and dk shivkumar is good to hear but internally they know pretty well you know how much of pressure bjp put on dk shivkumar how much of pressure you put, they put on dk shivkumar they put enormous pressure he didn't budge he said namaste i am staying with congress why he knew pretty well that he knows even now yell i am not saying that he will not plot the defeat of sidaramaiah in assembly election but at this point in time he is united they are united the temporary truce is there they will fight among themselves that is indira gandhi's model hmm. indira gandhi never allowed one leader to survive in any state she always created parallel structure if there is a chenna reddy there will be a kota vijay baskar reddy there will also be a rajshekar reddy if there is a mupanar there will be a wada party ramurthy that is how she survived because nobody could question her leadership hmm. okay but if you don't empower your state units you cannot succeed yogi adityanath was empowered that is why he could deliver yes he took the help of modi he took the help of amit shah in a big way but he delivered mm-hmm. let's understand that okay so i i think uh, over to gujarat the most expected and the most uh, predictable state i should say what is what is your what is see, your take on gujarat see it was a 2017 was a year where congress could have definitely flipped gujarat hmm. gst was implemented and any radical reform when it gets implemented there would always be a challenge there was a patel problem there was kind of a, they were coming out of demonetization the business was disrupted it is a business state it is a state of traders it is a state of entrepreneurs it is a state of farmers it is a state of trader uh, tribals hmm. accepted but the influencers are the business the business people so in fact they came close there was no doubt about that they came close but the very fact that rahul gandhi had invested so much of time energy resources on gujarat i think that defeat demotivated him like anything i think i can understand somebody that was a defeat where it is like that last ball six of miandad against uh, india in sharja what what, was, what did After they do wrong sir uh, no they did everything right but you know modi knew what to do right mm. he knew pretty well that surat if i can get if i can sweep surat if i can sweep the uh, southern gujarat he knew pretty well that saurashtra was difficult he mm. knew pretty well that uh, you know north gujarat was difficult but he felt that if i can sweep south gujarat if i can perform decently in central gujarat if i can sweep kutch then i am home and dry mm. now that kind of st- see because i'm modi is a strategist strategist yeah. right before your you know today we all talk about even i call myself political strategist we are bachas in front of him he is a he is a he is a chanakya he is the original chanakya your channel can call yourself as chanakya with due respect to pandey sir okay but the cha- after the original chanakya the next chanakya who deserves that name is narendra modi i thought it's amit shah no 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 amit shah is walking the footsteps of modi mm. okay gujarat in his first victory in 1987 in the ahmedabad municipal corporation election you go and ask there they will tell you what kind of strategy he deployed he only needed a person who can execute that strategy amit shah executes the strategy developed by narendra modi mm. he is a master strategist 
Okay. Perfect. You cannot compare anybody else. In fact, even immediately, immediately somebody from Tamil Nadu will jump around and say, what about Karnanadi? Karnanadi was a strategist. But when he knew pretty well that he was losing an election, he could do nothing. But Narendra Modi, when he knew pretty well that he is losing an election, he could do everything to flip it. That is the difference between MG, Modi and anybody else. Okay. And that is what is a great strategist. So, he, he just flipped it up. Probably he didn't have a charming opponent like uh, M.G. Ramachandran. <laughs> <laughs> no, just kidding. <laughs> so, that's what, that's what I would say. So, it's a strategy. So, his strategy ensured that he flipped. So, I think Rahul Gandhi must have reasons to believe that I think this man is, not, is, is unbeatable. Okay. And even then, you know, Madhya Pradesh was, you know, with the scuff of the neck was taken. Chhattisgarh was swept. Rajasthan was won again but with a lot of pain. But still, I think, I think Rahul Gandhi felt that this man is unbeatable. That's the reason why he ran away. Art's vote share is increasing in Gujarat. Is that not a threat? Uh, no, it is not a Will that not flip the coin in certain areas where BJP is weak in Gujarat, like Saurashtra, as you mentioned, so, the Saurashtra so, region? See, I think uh, in, uh, if you look at it, in Kerala, BJP gets around 12 to 15 percent votes, and there are constituencies where they get even 28 to 32 percent votes. Mm. But till now, in the history of Kerala election, they have only won one seat. Only one MLA seat they have won. Okay. okay. Now, you can, in, in, in Uttar Pradesh, BSP cornered around close to around 14 percent of votes, but they could just get one seat. Now, for a political party, which has a single digit or even double digit vote percentage, for that to convert into seats, you need to be like a party like a PMK, Patali Makal Kachi. Patali Makal Kachi always had only around 5 to 6 percent of votes. But that 5 to 6 percent of votes can translate into 12, 15, even 16 seats or even 5 parliamentary seats predominantly because they are located, no, 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 they are located in one area. They are, they are densely populated in one area. Okay. Okay. If you look at it, Dharmapuri, Krishnagiri, up to an extent, Salem, Vellur, then you will come to uh, Kadalur, you will come to Bilupuram, you will come to Dindigam, Chengal, that's, that's all, that's all, that's mm-hmm. all. And then it will extend up to Kumbhagonam, up to probably Tanjavur, it will extend. But those were all less numbers. So their community votes is, so a party like BSP, Jatav, it's spread across UP. Mm. Yes, in Western UP, there are, there are many Jats, but it's spread across UP. As a result of which, if you have 12 to 15 percent of votes concentrated in one area, it can give you seats. If you have 12 to 15 percent of votes, but your voters are spread across the entire state, it will not give you even a single seat. Why is Ram Tamil not winning a single seat now? But the those, those parties are. But those parties can play a spoiler role. But I, I don't believe Gujarat is such a weak state that AAP can no. play a spoiler role. No, AAP cannot spoil. AAP, AAP if, if not anything else, AAP will probably play a spoiled role for Congress. For Congress, okay. Okay, mm-hmm. because you know anti-incumbency vote, and I'm not going to vote for BJP if somebody thinks, okay, fine, let me vote for Congress. Congress, I've been voting for the last from 1985. I've been voting only for Congress. Let me now just come vote for AAP. That's how AAP will get votes. So I don't believe that AAP will be in double digit. In fact, I've been I've been telling all along, AAP will be in single digit, Congress will be in double digit, BJP will be in triple digit. I'm not saying that it is going to be in 150 Fourth seats. Fourth time, right? Uh, 1995, 1998, yeah. 2002, 2007, 2012, 2017. This is the seventh time. Seventh time. Hmm. Seventh consecutive victory. So you declared it as victory already. <laughs> Yeah, consecutive victory and probably bigger than a victory which was orchestrated by Sri Narendra Modi in 2002 where they won 127 seats. As a, strategist, as a strategist, sir, what would have been your game plan if you were to design the strategy for Congress in Gujarat today? See, I would say that they should, they should consolidate the Muslim votes. Hmm. They should consolidate Muslim votes. They should consolidate. They will have to do a voter profiling in every booth where traditionally who have been the non-BJP voters. 
how much percentage have been the non bjp and they should have formed an alliance with the ncp and the tribal party and all other parties and uh, you know add a unified uh, picture and more importantly they do not have a candidate who can stand in front of narendra modi and a nominee of narendra modi. see because it is not only narendra modi you have amit shah now you have cr patel then you have bupen patel then you have a battalion of leaders and congress does not have and you know in you you gujaratis do not like cursing business mm. now now the whole plan of rahul gandhi has always been to blame adani and ambar so that is not liked by them they feel that they are the ones who give us employment they are the revenue generators they are the they are the uh, rain makers and you go on talking bad about rain makers Hmm. you go and tell any farmer if you go and talk about bad about varuna and uh, surya he will get upset because the sun doesn't rise agriculture is not going to work if the rains do not come at the right time then the crops will not be proper so as a result of which they pray to sun god and varuna but here is a man who abuses your gods because they are the ones who give employment as a result hmm. of which they got it wrong and they have not invested in any single leader in fact why rahul gandhi got annoyed and has not come to gujarat is because gujarat congress leaders have told very clearly that do not speak bad about ambani and adani mm. the more you speak bad about them the more voters get who gets repelled so at the height you know at the at the air level air force level i'm talking about you will have that strategy at the ground level voter profile voter profiling in every booth you have to play the bjp's game to beat bjp hmm. but do they have the kind of karyakartas congress do they have the ground force do they have a set of volunteers who can go and talk to the voters day in and day out try to profile them try to get them and see what is their disenchantment with the local mla Seven times, madam. You know you will have MLAs who have got the anti-incumbent. Has there been a, a, a reduction or a, a dip in the vote share of uh, BJP in Gujarat, or uh, has it has it ever been? You know, the, have you ever noticed a fluctuation? It has only gone up. Okay, because it's a tripolar. It, it's a tripolar fight. The same. Probably they might lose, but I heard that Amit Shah is targeting fifty-five percent. Mm. Because that is what the maximum Congress got in 1985 under the Madhav Singh Solanki leadership. So six consecutive times there has never been even a drop in. Uh, no, 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 no. It has only gone up. It has only gone up. You know, it has only uh, gone up. Let me just tell you. Uh, in 1985, it was 14 percent, 14.96 percent. In 1990, it was 26.89 percent. In 1995, it was 42.51 percent. 1998, it was 44.81 percent. 2002, it was 49.85. 2007 it was 49.12 in 2012 it was a drop 47.85 and in 2017 it was 49.05 this is the vote share yeah. the drop was not very significant <laughs> it was not very significant so it was not yeah. very significant at the same time the congress it was 55.55 in 1985 30.47 in 1990 1995 it was 32.85 1998 it was 34.85 in 2002 it was 39.28 2007 it was 38 2012 it was 38.93 and 2017 it was 41.44 in 2012 it was because both bjp and congress had a drop because the shesh bhai patel faction was taking there thank you very much sir uh, i would like to actually continue this discussion in another uh, fashion of Uh, I don't have good news. I don't Karnataka. have good news to share with you regarding BJP mm-hmm. for Karnataka. I'm okay, sir. I'm okay with bad news. With bad news. <laughs> no, no. I'm telling. I'm telling you because you know I don't have. I said I have very, very good news for Congress supporters. It will be music to their ears. So uh, that's what I would like to tell at this point in time. Thank you very much, uh, Malak. It's a pleasure speaking. Thank you. Thank you so much.